What is up guys, Boris here, and it's that time of the month again. We have brand new Colosseum Chaos Difficulty levels out now. And today I'm bringing you guys my guide for in this video, the Jozu Chaos Difficulty level 1 through 5. Now, this time around, uh, for the Jozu levels particularly, these are going to be long fights, <laughs> at least for the ones I did. Uh, and so here, uh, for the first one, you have... a Fight, fine tempo Nami? I don't even know what tempo it is. Maybe Tornado Tempo Nami. You have some Nami. And uh, you see here, I have brought a Sengoku team. I went ahead and farmed some yellow orbs in the room before this. And you'll notice I have an unevolved Monet. Uh, I don't know, most of you guys won't have that, but it's, it really helps out here. So uh, Nami will actually revive once you kill her. So what I did is I went ahead and used Monet uh, for the damage boost plus the delay. And I went ahead and used Mamonga special. And I took her out. Uh, completely, you have two turns to do that. Um, otherwise, she'll she'll hit you for a good amount. And then once she revives, she'll actually put up a 50% uh, shield, I believe. And then she'll also delay the specials of shooters and slashes for one turn. So there, I take a hit. It doesn't do that much. Uh, I think it's only below 30 that she really does anything. And I go ahead and use Golden Pound Usopp here. Now we have four turns to take her out. Um, and of course you can take some damage, even if you don't kill her in 4 turns, you can tank a hit. So you have 4 turns, just go ahead and use Sengoku, Sengoku, Kobe. Uh, and yeah, you should be good to go. This one is, is one of the easier ones, uh, but it's still pretty difficult. Again, the Monet is really, uh, was really helpful there, but to be honest, it could be a lot of different uh, other uh, Sengoku units. So, that is Nami, and with that, I'll see you guys in the next room. Okay, level 2 we got Fukoro, and man, this guy is super annoying. Uh, now, I did bring a Strongworld Ace team here, pretty, you know, the standard Ace team, but you could bring Marco uh, to heal. Uh, pretty much, you have to hit 3 perfects before you can even damage him, so I would highly recommend that you, you know, you, you, you get your perfects on point. And it's just going to be a stamina battle, it's going to be a stamina battle. As you'll see here, I'll try to get him as close to dead as possible, and then I'm going to go ahead and use my burst. Now, he does a good amount each turn, but I believe under 50 he will hit uh, for I think around 15,000, maybe 16, so uh, that's, that's uh, something that you want to keep in mind. But after that, he should be back to normal hits. So, you know, just make sure to try to keep your HP at a decent level. And again, this is why you, uh, you can, like I said, you can bring Marco, <laughs> either Marco to heal you back up to full, uh, especially if you have Legend Marco for that orb boost. Uh, I'm actually going to be using Strong World Ace for a lot of these uh, dungeons so uh, this time around. Uh, and as you can see here, I mean, you can see why the massive amounts of HP combined with the massive damage that you can do. Uh, you should be good to go. And of course, uh, you see here I have Usopp. Usopp's completely useless in this. So go ahead and bring someone else. Um, and yeah, so uh, with that said, that is Fukuro. You'll see here soon I'll pop my specials and go ahead and take him out. And I'll see you guys in the next room. Okay, so now up we have Bride or Wedding Robin, and this one is actually uh, pretty difficult. But I, again, we're going to Strongwell the Ace team, and we're going to go ahead and use a special here to take out the guys in the back. Now, 
Uh, Robin, when she dies, she will once again revive, like <laughs> just like Nami, but she will revive her companions with her. So what I've done here is I went ahead and de dealt uh, you know decent damage the first turn. Uh, make sure to lock those orbs. I farmed those orbs before, so hand. So definitely, like I said, always on these coliseums, try to farm for the orbs on the previous rooms. Um, so now I still have my Heracles, which is going to be really important. And I go ahead and use Zephyr, take uh, her out. And then we'll still have the Zephyr uh, next turn when she revives. But now, like I said, she brought her companions back and they will all give you bomb orbs. So it's pretty annoying. Uh, but, like I said, that's why Heracles plays an important role. You're going to go ahead and use Heracles and go ahead and use Usopp for the 10%. Uh, just going to be something nice there. Uh, go ahead and use uh, Strong World Ace. Again, take out the guys in the back. Uh, also, I think I used Marco there. I, uh, I forgot to mention that. Take me back to full. And uh, yeah, gonna use Heracles, and that should do it. I still have the orb boost for Marco. I still have the uh, the Zephyr boost, so I should be able to take her out in one shot. And if you don't kill her in two turns, I believe she'll revive those guys again. So you want to definitely take her out uh, as soon as you can. Now, in this level, this one's a pain. <laughs> Strong World Zoro uh, base form or whatever. This guy is really, really annoying. He has a massive amount of HP, and he has a debuff protector, so you can't stall him. And on top of all of that, uh, he has a weird mechanic where he'll increase his attack permanently a couple times. So he starts at around 4,000, and he'll, you know, after two turns, he'll increase it to 6,000. After two turns, 8,000, and then finally after two more turns, to 10,000. So by the end of it, he's doing a lot of damage. Now, as you see here, I've brought uh, Marco again with Strong World Ace. And Marco's gonna heal me up once I'm ready, and it's pretty much just a stamina, a stamina grind. I will say though, however, you see me uh, use Strong World Frankie and Strong and Heracles. Uh, if you have those guys maxed, I recommend using them on the first turn because they will actually have extra. You get to use them twice at the end, which will be really important. I didn't do that, and they're not even maxed, or at least my my uh, Strong World Frankie I think is still missing three skill ups. But if he was maxed, I could have used them on the first turn, and I still have him up later at the end. Um, so overall, this is like I said, just just like the previous ones, you're gonna be long battles, just stamina matches. Uh, try to whittle him down slowly, and then once uh, once in a while, try to get a good hit in with some specials or whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty pretty basic battle. Uh, and that's pretty much all I explained. The only other thing I guess I, I believe maybe under 50%, he'll do a special that um, you know shuffles your orbs a bit and, and does a little bit more than normal. But for the most part, a pretty simple battle. So. Well, that said, guys, I'll see you for the final level soon. So just like always, the mini boss is stage four boss, and we're fighting him once again. This time, I've actually brought a Rayleigh team with the Whitebeard ship. The Whitebeard ship is going to be really important uh, to being able to do this. I couldn't do it without it uh, with the normal Sunny. So that extra HP is very important. And I'm going to go ahead and start off by using a Frankie. So our goal here is to take out a Strong World Zoro in uh, three to four turns, um, and 
normally my pattern is to go ahead and use Frankie. Now, you can use Strong with Frankie to get the yellow, red orb, and, and then the second turn is not necessary to get a red orb. Here I got really lucky. I got really, really lucky, but you don't need that luck. Uh, I've been able to take out Zoro without getting that red orb on the second turn. And then uh, there you go. He's going to swap your orbs, that special move, and then here you're going to use Kuma to give yourself a red orb. So the goal is two out of those three turns you're going to want at least one red orb, and that should be good enough, especially with the Whitebeard ship. It allows us to tank... Uh, I believe one more hit after this so that we will be fine and the, uh, using the Whitebeard ship you know starts you at 50% make sure to get those meat orbs early on uh, in this case I didn't need it but I could have tanked another hit there I think he deals 6,000 at that point so and then here we go Jozu man this guy's difficult if you get him I believe below 50% from what I've seen uh, he will deal 300,000 <laughs> so uh, you want to make sure to not get him below 50. Now this is sort of a discrepancy because on game with it says 30%, but I got him to a, a, around 40 and he definitely used that attack on me. So I want to say, I want to be safe and say 50%. Um, so I'm going to have him use uh, Marco to heal back up. The reason that the Whitebeard ship is also needed is this, because uh, Chelsea will deal around 20,000, which is more than what I normally have. So with the Whitebeard ship, it allows me to put me just in range, being able to tank one hit. And um, every turn, one last thing to note is that he will put up a color uh, defense, so that color will not be able to deal any damage to it. And yes, it can be blue, so it's really annoying if, if you get a couple blues in a row. There's nothing you can do about that. But uh, there we go, under 50%. Um, he attacked me, and I, you know, I survived thanks to the Whitebeard ship. And now, uh, pretty much, if you get one, all you need is one blue orb, and you combine it with NL, and you should be good to go. You see here. And again, the 8 above him just means you have to hit 8 hits before you can deal any damage at all. So, as you see here, boom, boom, boom. And then this is going to deal a lot of damage. Uh, so, now I just have to not miss and I should be good to go. So, overall, this one was pretty difficult. Uh, primarily because I kept uh, putting him below 50 and getting killed by the 300,000 move. So, that's primarily the main trick to this is don't do that. Uh, you could make someone like Streaming Wolf Zoro if you want to tank a hit like that. Uh, it's completely up to you, but I found this is one of the better teams uh, since I don't have Log Luffy. So, Year 3 team might not be too bad for this either. But with that said, guys, thanks a lot for watching. This has been the Jozu Coliseum difficulty, level 1 through 5. And if you guys did not know, the Coliseum uh, characters now drop every single time. So every single time you face a Chaos level, you're going to drop their character, which is an awesome new addition. And now you can get, I think, socket books on the 4th floor or 4th or fourth, uh, yeah, fourth floor or the 5th level. Now, Joe's is pretty interesting. He's going to deal large force damage to all enemies. And then when his crew is below a certain HP threshold, which I'm not sure of yet, it looks like we'll be getting a 1.5 attack boost. So, Whitebeard teams, this might be a really awesome addition to those. So, uh, let me know what you guys think about this Coliseum. Let me know how it went for you guys. Uh... Now, as to what Jozu actually does, uh, from the little bit I've seen, it looks like he'll deal large force damage to all enemies. Uh, and then when uh, the crew's HP is below a certain threshold, which I'm not sure of yet, he'll, you'll get around a 1.5 attack boost. So it could be awesome for Whitebeard teams. And his cooldown just starts at 29, so uh, start working on those skill ups if you need them. And so hopefully your guys' this Coliseum goes well. I'll be coming to you guys with the killer one soon. And until next time, thanks for watching.